Hey, what's up guys? This is Jason with RC Off-Road Racing. So I was going through uh, my buggy after this past weekend where we're supposed to race. We, um, you know, every, the people that run the race, they, you know, came out Friday. We all had practice. You know, everything was looking like it was going to turn out pretty well. Then Saturday morning, um, the, uh, the little parking area there was just basically empty. Nobody really showed up, so it was pretty disappointing. We didn't get the race, and you know, I guess you know, after talking with uh, Bobby and Steve, two guys that run the track, <clears throat> you know, they were said we could have done this, that, or, you know, some kind of improvised racing, I guess. Uh, but you know, nobody was really into that, so we basically just settled on, settled on everybody just kind of practicing, you know, because there was some people. There's probably maybe I don't know. 10 to 10 to 15 drivers but with a lot of them being nitro you know to have a mart to have marshals and they're pitting somebody pitting for them it would have been difficult so we just ended up didn't race so anyway um <clears throat> you know my day was cut a little short i was by uh bearing one out i mean i could have you know repaired it right there on the spot i had everything i needed but i figured heck we're, we're done we're not racing might as well go try to do something else for the day so I ended up uh, coming back home and, you know, helping my daughter work with uh, work with her a little bit on her dance recital, which turned out great. You know, she's in a ballet class, has been for about six, seven months now, and they had their, her, well, her first recital. Apparently, they do it every year for the past, uh, I think, about 14 or 15 years. So, anyway, um, so, you know, when I took the center diff out. It was this bearing right here, the back one. Um that had locked up and I had quite a time trying to get um, the center differential out really because that bearing had locked up and was kind of seized up in there but whenever I did get it out you know um, I got it out and got it replaced went ahead and changed you know went ahead and just tore down the whole center diff and put new fluid in it cleaned everything up with some new uh, new uh, o-rings in it <clears throat> I got everything back together I'm sitting here you know I'm sitting here I'm like looking at it and uh, I was trying to set the gear mesh and it was making it, it was kind of I don't know it, it felt like there was some play somewhere so you know I was trying to looking for what, what you know what that was so I took the motor out um, opened up this front piece this little front plate here took that off and then, you know, here's another thing that, um, you know, I did this throughout the day when I was running because it gets so, uh, you know, so dry and dusty there real quick uh, in the summertime, especially, you know, when it's real hot and the sun's beating down. The, uh, the dust, you know, gets up in the motor. So what I do is I'll take and I'll spray forward through here and I'll go through some of the holes. You can see the, sm uh, the dust kind of come out the back there. But uh, so I took the motor apart. And I, start, you know, blew the dust out, and man, I was just really, you know, surprised at how much dust had came out of it, because I clean this thing at least every, you know, month, month and a half or so, you know, I'll take it apart and blow the dust out. I guess it'd probably been about that long. So anyway, guys, uh, any of you guys running electric brushless motors, you want want to make sure that you, uh, you know, take the motor apart and clean it on the inside. Uh, basically, you can just blow it out and then run a toothbrush, you know, clean toothbrush through in it and kind of get some of the extra dust that didn't blow out and, you know, some of whatever's in there out of it to clean it up a bit. All right, so then I, I put everything back together and got it back in here. And I was still feeling something wasn't right. It was rather than the gears, you know, the little bit of play there, a little backlash or whatever I think they call it. Um, it still wasn't, it was, you know, something was wrong. So, uh, I took the motor back out and I took a look at it. Now, this is the other uh, motor, the other ZTW motor I had. The one that when I ran it, it seemed like, uh, you know, it had some, some drag already in it, which was causing it to get really hot. Also, um, you know, causing it to, like, when I let off the throttle, it was, you know, automatically braking kind of. So, I still haven't figured out what's up with that, but I really don't, um, I ain't worried about that right now. So, what I did, 
or you know one thing I notice are if you hear that let me see all right that's the uh, the shaft kind of moving back and forth which it's not supposed to be like that <clears throat> so I took this piece off of this one which this piece that's on here now is from the 1900 kV and that bearing is just about worn out you know so I um, I just replaced rather than pressing the bearing out you know and changing or anything like that I just put this whole top plate on onto the other one now <clears throat> to give you an example of what it's supposed to be like you know there's not supposed to be any any of that now this is a Goulart C motor this is my 2250 which is nothing wrong with it um, think about getting a truggy to put it in and pair it with that uh, the ZTW ESC which I need to get a program card to set some things on that but this thing is just it's in there tight there's no play at all no backlash no nothing like that now they will go forward to back some sometimes a little bit and that's pretty used pretty normal so <clears throat> so anyway I'm gonna have to uh, look into ordering some new bearings I'm glad I caught that rather than uh, the bearing in the motor going out uh, during a race or you know practice or something and, and ruining you know the rotor in this motor or ruining something in the motor so you know because the bearing that you can probably get a bearing somewhere under 10 bucks I'm sure for you know a set of them probably so anyway I'm gonna look into ordering those um, all right so another thing you can see um, right here whoop, <clears throat> right there down there um, that's where the I guess the damage that occurred to this uh, top plate here that hold you know that covers the center differential and holds it you know tight in place so it'll work like it is right now um, however I am gonna go ahead and order a new piece right for that probably won't be but a few bucks <clears throat> so another thing I want to mention I ha I had just replaced this uh, bearing right here on the differential um, you know within the past week or two so I'm wondering if maybe that motor bearing, you know, having gone bad and allowing for a little bit of slop may have caused that the the differential bearing to lock up. I really don't know, but <clears throat> you know, um I just going to I'll, I'll suggest that anytime you see any bearing that has more play than you than really if you, as you can see, there's really not much play when you got you know, good fresh bearings in there. So if you ever notice that, you're going to want to change them because you don't want to do, you know, lasting damage to the motor to make it where it be a more expensive repair or you just have to get a new one. All right, so the mail just ran and um, my replacement Savox servo just showed up. So I'm open this thing up and take a look at what they uh, sent to replace. I got to say, <clears throat> this servo is not very, the servo I use is not very common servo people use in eight scale buggies. But I really like it because of how fast it is. And, you know, I'm running it at the high voltage setting, which is 7.4 volts. It seems like it's got, you know, just the right amount of torque. You know, I know you want to have at least 222 ounces or something, somewhere somewhere over 200 ounces of, inches of torque. And this that's what this thing has is 222, which is a little on the, on the you know, the low end for eight scale buggies. But... <clears throat> Also, I got to tell you, um, this JX servo, JX servo, that I got the DC6015. It's not quite as quick as this. It doesn't make that buzzing noise. It doesn't center real well. But for for what it is, you know, it's quick enough and it, it's done really well for me. Um, yeah, this is a servo I was using when I made the past videos. So I don't know. You guys decide. All right, let me tear into this thing. I'll be right back. All right, so there's what we got. I'm going to tear it open real quick. All right, guys, so here's what came in uh, in the pack. I was hoping it would come with a new servo horn, but I think that's something that the seller just offered as a gift with it through eBay. But, um, you know, they had the, the uh, my, my uh, request for a replacement was um, handled real smooth, everything, you know. They had no problems with it. I didn't, they didn't even ask for the receipt. I told them where I purchased it and when I did. 
and um, you know, they never asked for the receipt. However, I, you know, I did have it ready to provide. So, um, this was done through HRP, I think. Anyway, all right, guys. So you can see right here the stats or the specs on it: 16 kg, uh, 0 0.065, which is incredibly fast at 7.4 volts. So. A lot of people like to run, um, you know, somewhere around in the ballpark of, you know, 20 or more kg, which is, you know, what I'd probably like to, to run also. However, however, for the price, um, you know, you can't, you can't really beat this thing how, with how fast it is. And it has got enough power, I think, so. All right, guys, so, well, I'm going to get this servo installed in here and, you know, keep that one as a backup. And maybe get a more expensive, better one as a backup uh, at some point. But for now, that one will, will work. Um, you know, it's raining today, so you know, it's not been raining all day. It's just been raining for like the past hour, which is going to be good for practice because that track really dries out. So, you know, really needs some water. They don't keep the water cut on all the time, so you can't just spray it whenever you go up there. So anyway, that's why I try, I try to go up there after it rains. All right, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you got any questions, leave them in the comment section, and I'll see you guys next time. Later.